We are in Adobe CC, and in this movie, we're going to take a look at how to make some simple geometric patterns in a non-traditional way, and then take those patterns and map them to objects uh, in a three-dimensional space. And we could do that with the perspective grid, um, but in this movie, we're going to take a look at, uh, under the effects panel or menu, uh, 3D, and revolving forms and then mapping our patterns to those forms. Working in Illustrator, um, there's many ways to make patterns, right? Everything from creating an object and using the pattern options under the window menu, um, we can uh, draw out uh, a line segment, for example, and um, do essentially a step and repeat and here by making a selection we can option shift and drag out um, an additional line segment and then command D to create a series of, of lines that make a pattern. Um, that's one way to go. Um, but built into Illustrator is a series of different uh, grid tools. And so if I was to draw out a rectangle um, let's make this black so we can see it and come under object path split into grid they give us this um, split uh, into grid option dialog box and we can start to type in some parameters let's turn preview on and we can divide uh, shapes into rows and into columns uh, we can add gutter space between them on both sides uh, we can also adjust the height and um, the width of the space. So if we want to make a perfect square, we can define that. Uh, we can spread them out as well past the original um, parameters that we set and um, then just click OK. And what do we have? We have uh, a pattern set that is still individual uh, vector formats that can be scaled up and down uh, and used, um, you know, how you see fit. So uh, a pretty simple and easy uh, solution to creating textures and patterns. Um, another thing under the line uh, segment tool is the polar grid. There's a rectangular grid tool, there's the polar grid tool. The polar grid tool is um, essentially a, an ellipse uh, that is divided up uh, in the segments and you can hold the shift key down uh, to constrain those proportions. And you can adjust the amount of divisions both uh, with the radial lines and the concentric, concentric circles uh, with your arrow keys. So with your left and right arrow keys, you can add and or subtract um, the radial lines. I'll take them all out. And with your up and down arrow keys, you can add uh, and subtract uh, the amount of circles that are um, in this. Uh, and we can then you know, add style to this as well and um, start to create some, some interesting shapes. Uh, and they're treated just like a regular vector circle. Um, you can start to add uh, color properties, um, different line properties, and you can come up with um, some interesting things. Okay, now that we've created some patterns using the internal grid features in Illustrator. Let's uh, look at how we can map these patterns to uh, or in the three-dimensional space. Now I've already um, taken our patterns and put them into our symbols palette that we'll need uh, in order to do this and it's just a matter of just dragging and dropping them over the palette uh, once it's open and you can see here we have our lines, we have our concentric circles, and we have our grid of squares. So I want to close this uh, or hide this layer and let's turn on a new layer uh, to work with and let's create a shape that we can map our patterns to. So I'm going to drag out a circle and then I'm, um, I want to rotate this. So I, I really just want half a circle. I'm going to take a rectangle and lay it on half on top on half of the circle and use our pathfinder uh, minus front and just to get our our half circle. So coming up to effects, 3D, evolve, and turning our preview on, 
it's automatically spun our circle in three dimensions to make a sphere. And then clicking on Map Art uh, launches this dialog box. We can click our uh, invisible, invisible geometry so that we have no fill, so it's just a wireframe. And then we can come up to our Symbols drop-down, and we can see that we have um, all three of our new symbols that we've created. So um, let's give us a second. It's going to load up. And then we can see that it's been applied and rotated uh, around uh, or mapped to our sphere. We can also uh, work within this, this dialog box by um, scaling to fit. We can move it around. We can shrink it. We can stretch it. Um, there's a bunch of different options that you can do with this. Um, so here we're just going to stretch to fit or scale to fit. And you can see the shape uh, that's created here on the right. Uh, another great feature is that we can now rotate our, our, our object in space and get different views uh, by just really grabbing the handles uh, or the planes of our cube and it automatically updates. Um, so once we're happy with that, we can just say OK and then come up to object and expand our appearance. And so that's um, one shape from our pattern. Now let's try another. Let's come up to uh, and create a rectangle and let's give this uh, some color so we can see what we're looking at and back up to effect 3D uh, revolve. Let's turn our preview on and so we have essentially a cylinder in space. Uh, mapping art we have um, eight views to choose from. And if we scroll through eight surfaces, so as we scroll through, you can see we have our top plane, we have our bottom plane. Um, we have uh, a host of different ones. And let's just get back to, uh, we, want, we want our circumference, our outside symbols. Uh, let's look at our grid. Uh, and it automatically maps it in, in three, three dimensions uh, around. And what we can do is we can now rotate this. And you can start to see that. Um, it creates this ribbon effect. Um, we can scale it and we can change uh, the position. Um, that looks good and click OK. And again, we can grab our cube and start to change our perspective uh, and look at it, look at that view in, in different ways. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to say OK. Uh, and that's a means of creating uh, patterns in three-dimensional space.